You may have heard of no mo may, but now there are questions about how effective the movement really is. Next, weather meteorologist Adam Del Rosso takes a look at a new trend helping to protect pollinators. No mo may. It's definitely got a catchy name. And there's meaning behind the movement, with more than 200 species of bees native to Minnesota. There's a lot of momentum to try to protect pollinators in Minnesota and in the Midwest, and so it's kind of been a nice, easy, easy step into environmentalism for a lot of homeowners. But does letting your lawn grow for a month really make a difference? And there was a little bit of research that showed that there was a benefit to that. That research has since been uh, retracted. That's why there's a push for something a little different. In Roseville, they're promoting what they call less mow may. Something they say can benefit pollinators year round. Mowing your lawn less has a lot of great co benefits. I mean, it's if you use a gas lawn mower, you're using less fuel throughout the year. If you let your grass grow a little bit longer, it actually grows deeper roots and is a little bit more resistant to drought, like we've been seeing in the last few summers. At the U, they're calling it slow mow summer. They recommend keeping your grass height at least three and a half inches. A taller mowing height means less mowing, less water, and an overall less work for your lawn throughout the summer. Trampy also recommends planting bee lawns. Most of our bee lawn mixes that we've uh, that we have recommended have included uh, white clover, uh, self heal, creeping thyme, uh, and then the principal component of that is the fine fescue or a simple pollinator garden filled with native plants. I just have a small pollinator patch in my backyard, and even just adding that 10 by 10 patch has made a huge difference in the number of. You know, bees and butterflies that I see flying around. In Roseville, Adam Del Rosso, WCCO News.